A heated divorce with claims of domestic violence, but somehow the alleged victim ended up on the defensive and the system turned against him. Coming up next, Chief Investigator Jody Barr hunts for justice and the criminal charges that keep disappearing, dismissed right after the break. I slowed down, I could see the vehicle progressively getting closer and stuff behind us. I really didn't pay attention, other than the fact that I noticed that they were gaining on us pretty quick. I'm slowly creeping up, just creeping up to the stop sign, just to see what happened. I pulled up and made a loop in 38 and pulled back. She was throwing stuff towards the truck, and then I was taking it and throwing it back out of the window. Like, but it was like pennies and stuff like that is basically what it was. It was change and different things. She comes towards me when she does. I'm, I'm basically like backing up, running in a circle like this, going around through the highway. And she's steady spitting at me, spitting all over me, hollering and cussing at me, spitting on me. I kind of get to a point that I get her close enough from me that I think that I can run back to the vehicle to try to jump in the truck to take off before she can do anything. And she's punching me again. And I'm like pinned in between the seat of the vehicle like this, and she's right here on me, and she's steady punching me. The boys are in the back of the car. They're hollering and screaming because they're upset and they're crying because they're telling her, Mama, stop, Mama, stop. She's still punching and fighting me. These three pictures here are actually from the night of the CDV. This here is where she had punched me above my eye. That night in July 2021. This here is actually from that same night where she had struck me on the side of my face. The Marlboro County Sheriff's Office charged Shane Crowley's estranged wife, Sarah Jordan Crowley, with second degree domestic violence. He worried reporting it would likely not be taken seriously. Was that a hard call to make? Yeah, it was because they, they take it as a joke when you're a man and someone, you know, a woman's jumping on you, beating on you. She struck me probably eight or nine times in the face. Within three days of the assault, Shane Crowley filed for divorce. He hired Florence attorney Haley Turnblad. His estranged wife hired Cody Mitchell as both her divorce attorney and criminal attorney. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mitchell is also an elected member of the South Carolina House of Representatives. In August 2022, both sides met to mediate a settlement, a settlement that required Shane Crowley to not help the solicitor in the prosecution of the domestic violence case against his estranged wife right there in item number eight titled non-cooperation you look at the last page on here you signed it yes, that sir. day yes sir why did you sign it because of the leverage point that they had put on me to use my kids against me the fees and stuff that she told me i was going to accrue to have to pay her to be able to go to court to proceed if i didn't agree with that Crowley says the lump sum of money was a $25,000 settlement he'd have to pay his estranged wife. I was going to lose everything, basically. It was going to cost me this lump sum of money. I was going to lose custody of my kids or they could be placed in foster care, which is something I didn't want. So I was willing to risk anything to keep them from being put in that situation. Who told you foster care was a risk? Haley. Your attorney? Yes, sir. But this July 2022 email between Crowley and his attorney detailed what the other side wanted. It did not include a non-cooperation element. Crowley says that never came up until Cody Mitchell brought it up in the middle of the mediation session. The solicitor told us Cody Mitchell called the solicitor's office. Within 24 hours of that call, the solicitor dropped the domestic violence charge against Mitchell's client. Uh, I have the case file on Sarah Jordan Crowley for a criminal charge for CDV. We also confirmed that with a visit to the Marlboro County Clerk of Court's office. And right there in the case file. Looks like dropped the charges in the second degree for domestic violence. Assistant Solicitor Munnellins hand signed dismissal. Oh. All those state law require solicitors to notify crime victims of the status of their cases. Assistant Solicitor Elizabeth Munnerlin never told Shane Crowley about the dismissal. Crowley emailed solicitor Will Rogers accusing him of violating the crime victim's Bill of Rights. The solicitor wrote back with a promise to restore the domestic violence charge and writing that it appears our office was given some misinformation about your desire to proceed with the case. Two days after Crowley complained to the solicitor, Cody Mitchell filed a motion to force Shane Crowley to tell the solicitor he will not cooperate in the domestic violence prosecution or be held in in contempt of court. Coming up, did you try to use this criminal case against your client as leverage against Mr. Crowley? Your client tells me that you've allowed this to happen to him without doing anything to stop it. Is there any doubt here that the solicitor's office violated that crime victim's bill of rights? When dismissed continues after this. On January 6th of last year, 
both Crowley's and their attorneys showed up to the Marlboro County Courthouse for a final hearing on the divorce. Sarah Jordan Crowley's domestic violence charge was still pending at the time. Days before, we asked both attorneys for interviews. Neither Cody Mitchell nor Haley Turnblad agreed to talk with us about the mediation. So we found them on the way in to the hearing. As you're aware, I can't comment. Have a good day. Well, I want to ask you about this warrant dismissal you sent Mr. Crowley to sign. Did you try to use this criminal case against your client as leverage against Mr. Crowley? As you're aware, the rules won't let me comment on ongoing litigation. Okay, well, I'm asking you about your conduct that's being called into question. Have a good day, Mr. Moore. It is a criminal domestic violence case that your client is a victim in. Is that being used as leverage against him in this family court case? I'm not going to make any comments on ongoing litigation. Your client tells me that you've allowed this to happen to him without doing anything to stop it. Is that true? Is there anything at all you want to say about this before we broadcast this? During the hearing and because of the parking lot interview with us, Turnblad told the judge she wanted off Shane Crowley's case. In the same hearing, Cody Mitchell told the judge he didn't force anyone to sign the settlement agreement. Cody Mitchell said in that hearing to the judge that he didn't force you to do anything in that mediated agreement. He didn't force you to sign your name to it. You did it willingly and you should be held to it. What did you think when he said that? I, mean, I felt like it was a lie because he knew that they were forcing me to do something by the leverage that they had on me by using my kids against me. Two weeks after that court hearing, Cody Mitchell's client, Sarah Jordan Crowley, filed a felony complaint against me with both the North and South Carolina Bar. She accused me of practicing law without a license, claiming I provided legal advice to Shane Crowley, telling him that what the attorneys did here was unethical. I never told Shane Crowley that. Shane told the judge in open court it was the solicitor who told him that. Both the South and North Carolina Bar threw out Sarah Jordan Crowley's complaint against me, finding I was not practicing law at all. This here is actually a paper that I received from the AG's office to file um, for complaint. The state attorney general's crime victim ombudsman thought what the attorneys did in the case warranted a bar investigation. The ombudsman drafted this complaint letter for Shane Crowley to file a formal complaint against both Cody Mitchell and Haley Turnblad. Because they felt like that I had been treated unfair and unethical through my divorce for the mediation, the way they were using me as a victim and charges and stuff to try to coerce me to make decisions. Because lawyer complaints are confidential, we have no way to know the status of the complaint or whether it was investigated at all. State law allows the Office of Disciplinary Counsel to keep attorney complaints and investigations secret until either a public hearing is held or a sanction imposed. There is no evidence of a hearing or sanction against these attorneys. Since last year, the criminal domestic violence case against Sarah Jordan Crowley sat in a file cabinet at the clerk's office. We put our news investigation on hold a year ago, waiting to see what the solicitor did with the case. Then last month, the file disappeared from the Marlboro County online court record search. Come to check on the CDV case between me and my wife. Last month, we followed Shane Crowley into the Marlboro County Clerk's Office as he found out why his estranged wife's domestic violence charge was wiped off the court records website. It's showing she don't have anything. They've been expunged. They've been expunged? Mm -hmm. Okay. Would they have any paperwork or anything that would show anything like that? They don't know anything? We have to um, uh, destroy them. Really? Yeah. Once we get that order, we have to... Yes, ma'am. You now have an answer from the clerk. What What do you think of that? Uh, shocked. Fact one, that it's just wiped out and there's nothing there, no evidence or proof of anything. And secondly, I wasn't notified of anything even coming up like this. You never heard from the solicitor? No, sir. There we go. To get answers on what happened in that mediation and the solicitor's office violations of the Crime Victims Bill of Rights, the AG's ombudsman assigned Shane Crowley, a victim rights attorney. They're supposed to operate independently of each other, so the criminal case, it should not be used as leverage in a family court case. Okay. The South Carolina Victims Assistance Network attorney organized this Zoom call between Crowley and solicitor Will Rogers last year. Likewise, the criminal case um, would not or should not be impacted really by the family court case. 
Okay. So, you know, for example, that case shouldn't be dismissed because of anything that happens in the family court case. But Crowley's own attorney told him and his father in a meeting at her law firm days after the 2022 mediation session, leveraging criminal charges in divorce cases is just the way it's done in family court. And didn't you tell him, well, if they call you, just tell them you can't go, you're out of town or you're somewhere? Yeah, just that he wasn't going to participate or testify. But that shouldn't even be in, in the mediation. A criminal criminal charge should have never been part of the mediation to settle that. That should have never been a, a, it's not allowed. It's people do it all the time. And, I mean, that was her goal, was to get out of that criminal charge so that she could continue with school. And they allow that to be in mediations all the time? Yes. Last month, we again asked both Haley Turnblad and Cody Mitchell for interviews. Turnblad never responded. Mitchell declined, saying he cannot talk about the mediation because mediations are confidential. But we weren't asking him about anything confidential. We were asking about public documents filed in the Marlboro County Clerk's Office. If things would have been done properly and the outcome would have been whatever it was. I could respect that. If Representative Cody Mitchell, a lawyer in a position of political power, was not involved, Shane Crowley believes the solicitor would have handled all of this differently. Is there anything to that? No, and I'll be glad to have that discussion with him if he wants to. I know when I started handling the case, I've never had any contact with the, the former attorney who was a House member. I mean, I've never talked with him um, anything about this case. Do you see how it looks? Yeah, yeah. Fourth Circuit Solicitor Will Rogers took over the Sarah Jordan Crowley prosecution in 2022 after Assistant Solicitor Elizabeth Munnerland dismissed the domestic violence charge the first time without telling Shane Crowley anything. What I messed up on or made a mistake on is after I made the decision on that resolution of the case, I didn't reach back out and keep them updated and let them know what my decision was. Is there any doubt here that the solicitor's office violated that Crime Victims Bill of Rights? Um, I'm not the one that makes that determination, but you know, I think it's pretty clear. The solicitor says state law bars him from telling us how he disposed of the case. But the screenshot taken days before the case was erased from the public index shows Sarah Jordan Crowley's criminal charge was dismissed on January 25th and her case file destroyed days later through an expungement. Do you accept the solicitor's apology that he just forgot to tell you? No, sir, I don't. I put faith in a judicial system to protect me and my kids as victims and they let us down. We offered Sarah Jordan Crowley an interview for this report, but she declined, saying she wants to put this all behind her. Now, even though the solicitor admitted he violated the Crime Victims Bill of Rights by dismissing this case without telling the victim, there's nothing a victim can do when this happens. There's no criminal charge or civil penalty for a prosecutor who violates the Crime Victims Law. As for the now expunged domestic violence case, it's case closed and that charge can never be brought back. Mrs. Crowley filed for divorce in February, days before Shane Crowley found out her charge was dismissed and expunged, which means the Crowleys are doing this divorce all over again, but this time without that domestic violence charge hanging over this case.